Hey, in today's video, we're gonna find out if a $120 set of headphones like the Soundcore Q35s can hang with the venerable Sony XM4s that cost more than twice as much. Let's find out. All right, first of all, let me tell you, this is an unsponsored video. Not sponsored in any way, bought both of these headphones with my own money. In fact, let me tell you how I got here. I was actually researching headphones for my mother uh, for Christmas, and I ended up settling on the XM, the Sony XM4s. Um, and these things, as I mentioned, cost about 280 bucks. And I was so impressed with these headphones. I bought a pair of headphones for myself, so a second pair, and then I bought a third pair for my daughter, uh, so I bought three of these very expensive Sony headphones uh, leading up to Christmas. Now, as it turns out recently, my wife was actually wanting a nice quality over the ear set of noise canceling headphones. And so um, she wasn't sure she needed the Sonys, but she kind of left it up to me to figure it out. So I went out and did some more research and I came across the Soundcore Life Q35s at way less than half the price of the Sony's. And I was curious. Now, obviously I saw an opportunity to do a, a comparison video on YouTube, uh, but you know, based on just paper alone, looking at the specs, these things shared a lot of similarities. And as you can see, uh, even beyond the specs, the, the cases for these things are, are almost identical. And, but, and they come with a, you know, an air, airplane adapter and a USB cable and all that stuff. So it occurred to me when I was looking at these two sets of headphones that I've already bought three pair of these $280 Sony's. Uh, and maybe I could have saved a lot of money. And having bought three of these, had I bought three of these instead, I would have saved over $500. And so how well do they really compare since they look so similar on paper? Uh, so let's talk about how they are actually similar. They both have active noise canceling. Um, they both have pass-through or uh, transparency kind of mode, depending on uh, which brand you're talking about, but it's where you can hear ambient sounds. They both have fantastic battery life. Uh, the Sony is rated for 30 hours of uh, playtime. The Soundcore is rated for 40 hours. Now I haven't been able to really push that and uh, test that fully out to see you know, under what conditions is that true. All I can tell you is under normal listening conditions for both of these, the battery life is phenomenal. And I've had no complaints about either one. Very happy with the kind of battery life I get out of these. They both have touch controls. Uh, they have button controls, but there are some differences there in, in how the touch controls work. Uh, there are more buttons, uh, control buttons on the sound core than there are on the Sony. Uh, so really the question for me comes down to sound and functionality. Right? Are the extra features you get with the Sony worth that extra $150 or $160 that it costs for these XM4s? Hopefully at the end of this video, you have a better feel for the things you might get some use out of, things that you won't. Um, and then ultimately the most important thing is, uh, how do they sound? How do these things compare? We're gonna get into all that in just a couple of minutes. First, let's take a look at what the app experience is like for these two headphones, uh, because it is fairly different. And I think the app experience is an important part of these devices. So let's check those out. All right, let's take a quick look at the Sony app first. Interestingly, it's called headphones quite uncreatively. And the Sony app is packed full of a variety of options that you have at your disposal, some of which you'll find useful, some of which you probably won't. Um, there's adaptive sound control that you can turn on and off here. So it's it'll basically, you can register locations and it'll use your phone's location to, um, to determine where you are and what kind of noise uh, canceling you want to apply. Um, that's uh, somewhat useful. I'm not sure. I, I don't really find it all that useful. But you can manage your devices here um, and what's currently connected and what's actually paired. Uh, it's kind of nice. You can obviously control your media from here. If I uh, swipe over here to the sound section, um, I've got ambient sound control turned on. So this is your noise canceling. If I pull the down arrow here, I've got it on basically full noise canceling. And I can scroll. There's like 22 different uh, levels here. Um, I can I can turn on focus on voice so it will prioritize voice over other background sounds. Speak to chat mode, one of those things uh, that's interesting. It, it's designed to turn on ambient mode when you speak. I think you'll find it uh, particularly annoying and you'll very quickly want to turn it off because every time you clear your throat uh, or even make any kind of noise, it automatically engages ambient sound and stops whatever you might have been listening to. So it's, I find it super annoying. I just leave it off. Um, there's an optimizer here. Uh, so you can, depending on, like if you're in a plane, much higher air pressure, 
you may want to do redo the noise canceling optimizer and you'll get better results. So that's kind of cool. That's something that the uh, sound core doesn't have. Here's a five band equalizer uh, with a variety of modes. There's two custom modes um, and then some other presets in here, as you can see. Under system, you can turn on or off whether you want to connect to two devices or just one. And then you can also change the function of the custom button that's on the bottom. You can also turn the sensor control panel on and off. You can turn on whether the, the headphones automatically power off when you remove them or whether they just pause. Um, and that, so that's about it on the Sony app. All right, now we're going to take a quick look at the Soundcore app. So it's obviously called Soundcore, and we'll launch that. And when it pops up, you'll see it's got a, actually a more pleasant sort of contemporary interface than the Sony did. The Sony is definitely more utilitarian in that regard. But let's jump in there. It says we're connected, and it gives us an indication of our battery life. So I'll pop in and see what kind of options we have. Uh, first of all, we have uh, an ambient sound mode. We're currently in normal, so I can press that. And I can pick from uh, normal, which is no noise canceling. Transparency mode, which uh, lets ambient sound in. It actually picks it up on the mic and kind of puts it into the earpiece so you can hear out the outside sound. You really can't dial this in with different levels of ambient sound like you can on the Sony, so it's either on or off. And then with noise canceling, you get three modes. One, These are preset modes, transport, indoor, and outdoor. So you really only get three you know, iterations of noise canceling here. But in most cases, it's probably all you need. All right, so let's jump out of ambient sound. Um, only a couple other things here. There's the equalizer. And if we go into the default equalizer here, these are presets. And you can see I can pick from a variety of presets of different styles. Let's back back out of that. And let's go down to custom. If I click on that, you can see I've got actually an eight band equalizer that I can customize rather than just a five band. So I can get a little more granular on the customization of the sound here. Let's jump back out. And there's this thing here um, called Superior Sleep. I've never used this, but you can, I guess, play a, a variety of ambient sounds like, like wind noise, wind chimes, outdoor sounds. It might be interesting. You know, I'm not sure if I can maybe, maybe dial this in. Let's see how this sounds. So this is actually pretty cool. I've never used this before. I really like this. I don't know if I'd use this for sleep, but man, it's pretty cool. Take the rain down, make the birds a little less prominent. A little campfire crackling. <laughs> this is actually pretty neat, I have to admit. Little waves. Huh, I might actually use this. We'll go back to home here. There are some settings in here on the top. Wear detection. This is one thing I will point out. Apparently this is a uh, common problem with um, the Q35s that if you have wear detection on where uh, when you remove them it's supposed to automatically stop the media. Sometimes this thing actually thinks the, the headphones are being removed for some strange reason and will randomly uh, pause your media. And it might not do this for hours at a time and then it do it three or four times in a row. Uh, it, it does get to be annoying when it does happen so I just turn it off because it's really not a feature that I rely on all that much anyway. And then touch mode, like the Sony's, um, which uses touch mode for volume control, it actually lets you enable pass-through transparency mode. And it's a little hard for me to find that spot on the on the ear cup because it's it's a small kind of target. And I find myself having, when I try to do it this way, it's kind of tricky to to get it to, to work. It does work, but I, you know, I just have trouble. I don't have the muscle memory on the exact spot on the ear cup where this actually initiates. But there is a button for, for modifying noise canceling, so I, I, I tend to just use that. Or as I'll show you just now, uh, back out of this, there's a widget. So there, uh, Soundcore actually has a widget. So if I want transparency mode and my phone is handy, I can just click on it on the widget. Now we're in transparency mode. Go to no noise cancellation to full noise cancellation. I'll just put it on indoor. So that's the widget for Soundcore uh, Q35 and also the app. So what are my thoughts on the Sonys? Obviously, I really like the Sonys or I wouldn't have bought three of them. Uh, they do produce what I think is a much more sort of balanced sound across the entire frequency range as compared to the sound cores. Um, they're just, they're just, I think, fantastic for a wide variety of music types. They have much more advanced active noise canceling tech, and you can more granularly control how much ambient sound you want to let in, if any. If there are people talking around you, you want to, you want to minimize that, that uh, ambient noise. 
Um, it's a little more effective at controlling voice. Doesn't eliminate it entirely, but it does a really good job. And it's maybe 10 or 15% better if I had to put a number on it versus the sound cores. The Sony's, you kind of really kind of lack the ability to get just a really tremendous punchy bass out of the Sony's if that's what you're into. And if that is what you're into, I think you might actually like the sound cores a little bit better. Now, obviously the Sony XM4s are, are expensive compared to the sound cores, but when you compare them to Apple's high-end active noise canceling headphones and the ones from Bose, they're actually pretty reasonably priced compared to those brands. The touch controls on the Sony are, are pretty good. Um, I will say though that swiping up and down to adjust the volume is a little tedious because it only takes it basically one, one volume increment at a time. So if they're too loud, you're gonna find yourself swiping down repeatedly like 15 times to get the volume at a comfortable level. And if they're too loud, that's pretty annoying. So I would actually prefer the physical buttons like the sound cores have uh, for volume adjustments. What are my thoughts on the sound core? Now I've had, the, as I mentioned, I've had the sound core Q35s here for just under a month. Um, they're definitely bass biased, but you know, I, I wanna make sure you understand that I, I at least from my perspective and in, in my opinion, they are, it's definitely not a muddy bass. It doesn't make the low end, um, inarticulate. You really, it's almost like standing in front of a commercial grade, um, out, you know, high end sound system where you can feel the bass. It's so present, uh, but you, you don't feel it in your chest. In fact, it's a little bit of cognitive dissonance when you're, you're hearing such massive present, clean, punchy bass in your ears from these things. When you're listening to stuff like dance tunes or uh, EDM, uh, some types of pop music, um, but you, you don't feel it in your chest and it's a little bit weird because you normally, whenever you have bass of that, you know, of that kind of presence in your ears, you usually are feeling it in your chest as well. So that's kind of interesting. It's just, if that's the style of music you listen to, I, I honestly think you'll prefer the sound of the Soundcore Q35s over the Sony. The A and C, the active noise canceling on the Soundcores is not as advanced, but it is, it is very good. I would give it at about an maybe an 80% to 85% as good as the Sony's, which is saying something because the Sony's are absolutely fantastic. It has a few options, just not as many as the Sony in the active noise canceling, but I think it gets the job done for most situations. And I, I think if you never experienced the Sony's, you, you would be more than super happy with the uh, Q35's, from a, at least from an active noise canceling standpoint. Now the Q35's actually have a little bit better EQ options. I think the app interface is also a little bit more modern. It's more visually pleasing. The presets, there are a lot more presets. And, um, and if you want to customize, you get an eight band uh, equalizer, not a five band equalizer. So you have a little bit more granularity and dialing it into your personal preferences. So I, I do like that. Um, and as I mentioned, the app is just generally cleaner and a little easier to, to get around in largely because there's just not as many options on the Q35 as there is on the XM4. So to wrap up on the Q35s, it's just in general, extremely impressive uh, what kind of quality and features you'd get for just a little over a hundred dollars. Um, so my bottom line is here is while the Sony XM4s um, are clearly a more advanced piece of tech, the Q35s, I think for most people, especially if you happen to be uh, somebody who listens to more uh, dance music, podcasts even, um, EDM, hip hop, pop, that kind of thing. If, if those are really what your jams are, I think that you will be very, very happy with the Q35s and save yourself the 160 bucks. So hopefully you found some of this information useful in your buying decision if you happen to be considering one of these headphones. And if you did, please consider giving us a thumbs up. Would really appreciate that. Consider subscribing and all that nonsense. Anyway, hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.